Things are happening. Definitely happening. You know, one of the most important things right now is to stay spiritually positioned. One of the things the enemy wants to do is always get us out of position. And he'll bribe you, tempt you, make everything look better. You know, he'll do everything he can to get you out of position. I always look at spiritual positioning as stepping on the right button. And in this one button, it says the battle belongs to the Lord. <laughs> and when you step on that button, all the other buttons of fear, anxiety, stress, and all the other stuff begin to go, go away. Sickness, disease, infirmities, everything goes away. Now, there's always a process of things. So in this one of the things we've got to do is fight. And you've got to fight to stay spiritually positioned no matter what it takes. Even if it takes death. It's because the whole thing of being spiritually positioned is to deny yourself. If you can't deny yourself, you cannot be spiritually positioned. It's impossible. Does everybody get it? You know, there's a lot of religiosity out here. There's a lot of play religion, but there isn't true relationship. And one of the things that dad doesn't appreciate is playing religion. And we don't want to play religion. We want a relationship. Because with a relationship, your heart is always broke before God. There's always a cloak of humility. There's always a desire to say, what do you want me to do? You don't have to wait for God to tell you. You're always saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? And in this place, he'll always position you. You know, and, and, and we are in a, uh, such a tremendous battle and fight right now. I mean, you can see it. You, you know, every time there's elections going on, there's a tremendous spiritual fight. Because the devil wants his servant in office and God wants his servant in office. But the only way God's servant's going to get in office is by the people of God praying him in office. Of course, right now there's a lot of believers totally deceived. And that, that hurts the body. Tremendously hurts the body. But uh, uh, there's an area where God wants to bring us into this place of positioning. Because when you, are, when you spiritually get positioned, you don't justify anymore. You recognize. And there's a place where you stop justifying and you start recognizing. And, and in this place of justifying, you fall astray. Because you can't recognize. So if you can't recognize, it's because you're spiritually out of position. Does everybody understand? Would you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2? 2 Timothy chapter 2. I believe that this is one of the most important teachings today that we need to grab hold to. Of course, they're all important. But this is a, a word of now, right now. And in this, we know that the enemy is a deceiver, isn't he? And that's his purpose is to try and constantly deceive us. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20, would you read it with me? But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. How many of y'all want to be a vessel of honor? But well, then you must be spiritually positioned so you can recognize. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the ladder, say, cleanse myself from the ladder. Now, there are areas where you got to cleanse yourself from the ladder. The way you think, the way you speak, and the way you respond. Okay. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the ladder, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. How many of you want to do good works? Not selfish works. Good works. He says, flee also youthful lust, but pursue what? Righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 
but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. This is powerful. You know, there are people that are supposed to be here today who are not. And the reason for that is because they've been deceived. They've been taken captive. Now, they'll come out of it and justify why they're not here today. But God wanted them here today. Because this message was specifically for many who are not here today. <laughs> Does everybody understand? But praise God, you're here. <laughs> so what he's saying here is a servant must be able to discern. He must be able to teach. He must be able to endure. He must be able to submit to authority. And he must be able to lead. Because many are in darkness and need to be led to the light. For what? To help others come to their senses because of the deception of Satan's kingdom. Does everybody understand that? So they can come to their senses because of the deception of Satan's kingdom. Why? Because Satan has what? Deceived them. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. That's how he fights you. He first deceives you, then he enslaves you with fear. Fear. He first deceives you, then enslaves you with fear. Fear of what? Fear of loss? Fear of gain? Fear of trust? All kinds of fear. He'll get you with sickness and cause you to fear. He'll get you by stealing your money and lose your job. He'll cause you to fear. He, his purpose is to bring you into bondage of fear. If he can grab hold of you in fear, he's got you. And if you've been taken by fear, you are out of position. And you will not be able to recognize. What you'll begin to do is justify. Is everybody with me? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 12. Verse 12, would you read it with me? Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. What's the spirit of the world? Spirit of Antichrist, Satan's kingdom, any de devilish, the lion deceiving spirit, right? Okay. But the spirit who is from God that we what? Might know the things that have been truly given to us by God. The word might means that you must cooperate. Without your cooperation, you won't know. So that you might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which men, man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's called discernment. That's called recognizing. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. In other words, the carnal man. Natural understanding cannot receive the things of God. That's why the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, but trust God. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So there's an area where we must be able to recognize or discern. Are you with me? When it says here that the spirit of the world, those are demon forces that influence humanity. The spirit of the world are demonic forces that influence humanity. And they do this by causing them to sway. And they sway them to think and react in an un unjust way because they can't discern 
or recognize evil presence. And I will repeat this one more time. The spirit of the world are demonic forces that influence humanity or sway them to think and react in an unjust way. Why? Because they can't discern or recognize this evil presence because they're out of position. But we can because we are of the spirit of Christ and so we have no excuse, do we? Because we're to know all things. But if we're not, see, you can still have the spirit of Christ and be out of position, can't you? Then the devil comes and blinds you and deceives you, doesn't he? Now, what happens when people get out of position again is they begin to justify. Now, justify means the freedom of blame. What they want to do is they want to justify because they don't want responsibility. They don't want to get blamed. So what they do is they make an excuse. So when you make an excuse, you're actually justifying, aren't you? Now, there's something very powerful because the Bible says that you and I have been justified by faith. But there is a justification of faith and then there's self-justification. Are you listening? Good. Go to Romans 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. In verse 16, let's read it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall what? Live by faith. Now remember, we talked that faith is what? It is the promises of God because the gospel is the truth. It is the message of truth. So your promises are attached to the eternal realm. So that you are not walking by what you see. You are walking by faith. You are not walking in what you feel. You are walking by faith. Now you're walking in the other realm. But if you're not spiritually positioned, you're walking in the natural realm, and you're justifying instead of recognizing. Faith allows you to know the promise of God so that you're not bound by the promises of this world, which is eternal death. Has everybody got it? Praise God. Let's go a little further. In verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Okay, they what did they do? The they suppress the truth in what? Unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. Does everybody see this? For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, excuse means without justification. Because many people want to make excuses or justify why they do what they do. But their justification is associated with the natural realm and carnal and not faith. That's called self-justification. Is everybody with me? All right. Remember, the message of truth in Christ is the power of salvation. The just live by faith. Again, uh, faith comes by hearing the promises of God connected to the eternal realm that is unseen. But now seen by his promises or recognize. See, you, you and I must come to a place where we, we stop justifying and start recognizing. Everybody say, I'm going to stop justifying and start recognizing. Amen. I'm going to stop justifying and I'm going to start recognizing. Praise God. Now listen, but the unjust live by sight, intellectual carnality, self-justification, by reason of deception and an unknown fear. 
I'm going to say this again. The unjust live by sight, intellectual carnality, and self-justification. By reason of deception and an unknown fear. See, they don't even realize that fear is behind it. This is the unjust. But the righteous or the just are justified by faith. By the activating of his promises. Why? Because faith is action, isn't it? So while you're recognizing the promises of God, you're acting on them. So in other words, you have a broken leg. Now, the fact is that the leg is broken, but faith says by his promises, I'm healed. So you might have lost everything. You might be sick. You might be in a, a circumstance, but you cannot live in the carnal realm, even though there's a, a torment or a, there's a hindrance in the carnal realm. You're not living by the carnal realm. You're living by the spirit realm and you're staying in position. See, if you can't recognize these things, you're out of position. If you're justifying these things, you're out of position. That's why we must stop justifying and start recognizing because by recognizing you are in position and you're walking by faith and not by sight. The unjust live by sight. The just live by faith. Is everybody with me? So what we're doing is we are activating our faith by moving and confessing the promises of God. But many believers right now are justifying their responses and actions because they are out of position and they cannot recognize. Do you know that every believer, so-called, listen, every Jew and every Christian should not promote abortion or same-sex marriage. Then why is it happening? Because they can't recognize. Why? Because they're out of position. And the only thing they can do is justify. So they make an excuse or a reason why they're doing or, or promoting it. Are you understanding? Hey, I'm not afraid to say you're voting for the wrong person. I don't care what, what they promise. There's two major things that we must look at, and it's eternal ethics. And it's whether they promote death to children and same-sex marriage or they're against it. And I'm certainly not going to put the, put the one in office that's going to promote death to children and same-sex marriage because then the blood will be on my hands. And everyone who's voting for that individual that promotes death to children and same-sex marriage will stand before God with blood on their hands unless they repent. Are you listening? Why? Because they are out of position. They're playing religion and they truly don't have a relationship. It's all stinky religion. And it's disgusting. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. But we must stop justifying and start recognizing. This justification is nothing but an excuse for disobedience. It promotes laziness. Compromise. It's an excuse for failure. Complaining, whining, bunch of whiners, not winos, whiners. They whine enough, they turn into a wino. <laughs> Promotes discouragement. Woe is me. <laughs> is irresponsible and blames everything else and others for their problems. Are you listening? In verse 22. Is everybody there? These profess to be what? Wow. Wise. You know anybody intellectual that are very wise but so stupid they're ridiculous? <laughs> they profess to be wise but they became what? Fools. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, 
who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature or creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. It's amazing how many people are willing to give their lives for a dolphin or a whale or wait a minute. Now I heard something else. What was the other thing? Um, oh, vegetables. I heard this the other day. Vegetables. There was this uh, organization that says you can't eat vegetables. You're killing them. They have a right to live. You're going to tell me they had asparagus I'm going to grill today. He's got a right to live. Sorry. It's going to live in me with live enzymes. That's where it's going to live. I want to give it a good home. <laughs> so I'll just tell you, you ain't got to be alone no more. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you what. Things are getting worse, you know what? I mean, people are getting granola, nutty and fruity out there. Big time. I mean, they're like Nestle crunches, man. Incredible. Now go to verse 24. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness in the lust of their hearts to what? Dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the what? Creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of women burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, you see that now happening? People don't like to retain God in their knowledge. They don't want to recognize him. They're proclaiming to know God, but yet their acts show that they don't know him. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to the debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, Full of what? Envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Wow. They are deserving of what? Death. So if you're approving abortion, are you deserving of death? Yes. It seems to me that all of these idiots that call themselves reverends and are going to the polls that are promoting individuals that promote abortion and same-sex marriage have never read the Bible. And they call themselves revy. They're ravens, not reverends. And we need to send one of these teachers, every one of them. Glory to God. They profess to be wise. They're intellect. They're smart, but very dumb. They're foolish. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. They justify and not recognize. They, they, know, they not only practice, but approve with such practice things of like abortion and same-sex marriage in which they knew as children was immoral. They knew. That it was immoral. They were brought up that it was immoral. Those were immoral acts before God. But now agree and have taken the stain of the children's blood that have been aborted on their hands. And will stand before God in judgment. Because they justify and did not recognize. Not even willing 
to search out the truth because they've become men pleasers and not God pleasers. They're looking to be self-promoted. Are you listening? This is why we got to stop justifying. Even in our little simple ways, we got to start recognizing. Turn to Jude 16. Is everybody okay? Listen, God is love, but he's also just. Or else there wouldn't be a judgment, would there? The Bible says that we must be found worthy to enter his kingdom. Jesus made the way for us to be saved and to learn. Because if you don't learn, you'll you're born, man. And Jude 16. These are what? Grumblers. Complainers. Walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. These are those revs I was telling you about too. They get on TV and they do all of this political proclamation and how holy they are, and yet they have tails and horns. They promote, they stand there with blood dripping from their fingers. It is disgusting and immoral, and they must repent or they will be judged. When the rapture takes place, they will be left behind. Do you listen? I'm telling you. Those who promote and vote for these individuals that promote abortion and same-sex marriage will not be raptured. They will be left behind. He is coming for a blemish-free church. Not the blood of souls on our hands, but the blood of Christ on us. Verse 17. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. They are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the Spirit or not in fellowship with the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. These people, ah, they are grumblers. They are grumblers and complainers of the true way. They are justifiers of evil ethics they promote deception and carnality. They carry the plague of fear. They carry the plague of fear of loss of self and control. Are you listening? They carry the plague of what? Fear and loss of self and control. Go to Proverbs 1, verse 24. Oh, this is powerful. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 24. Now, I want you to understand that the spirit of Elijah and the spirit of Moses is here right now. And the spirit of Elijah is causing the children to be turned back to the father and the fathers to be turned back to the children. The spirit of Moses is allowing plagues and judgments to be manifested he is bringing the law and the truth. You haven't seen anything yet. Wait till they truly come in the flesh. Right now, they're here in the spirit. See, the Lord is also here because he's coming first in spirit before he eternally comes in the revelation by removing the church and then coming and stepping on the Mount of Olives where he'll bring the end of all wars. Right now, there is a tremendous, tremendous fight going on. Tremendous. And we cannot get caught up in the carnal realm in the area of justification. We must stay spiritually positioned so that we can recognize what is motivating your spirit. We must recognize these things. What is behind? Remember, your fight is not physical. It is spiritual. 
It's just manifesting in the physical realm. And Proverbs chapter 1, this is powerful. In verse 24, would you read it with me? The Lord said, because I called and you refused, I stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdain all of my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Now, is that powerful or what? This is what's coming. This is around the corner. I can almost taste it of what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, it's here. This is the result of justifying with the world and the ruler of darkness. This is justifying with the world and the ruler of darkness because of his deception and fear. Again, we must recognize our thoughts. We must recognize our words. We must recognize our responses and actions, our fellowships. We must recognize the fruits of individuals, people, places, and things. And we must recognize and discern the area of deception and truth and maintain the fear of God to make this and walk this through till the end. Now, the result of justifying with the world. People who justify, <laughs> they become whiners. Recognizing is winning. Everybody say recognizing is winning. Justifying is defeat. Ooh. Recognizing is winning. Justifying is defeat. Are you with me? Why? Winners take responsibility. Are you ready? Winners what? Take responsibility. Winners play the victim. Winners take responsibility. Winners play the victim. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Winners seek and find. Whiners blame others and lack. Well, we're going to go through a few of these, okay? So just, you can write them down. Powerful. <laughs> Winners find a way. Whiners find an excuse. <laughs> Winners find a way. Whiners find an excuse. Winners brighten a room when they enter. Whiners brighten the room when they leave. <laughs> Let me repeat that one, okay? Winners brighten a room when they enter. Whiners brighten it when they leave. <laughs> Hallelujah. Winners listen twice as much as they talk. Whiners talk twice as much as they listen. <laughs> Winners are like-minded with Christ and they are stable. Whiners are double-minded and unstable. Winners encourage self and others. 
whiners discourage everything. <laughs> Should we go further? You ready? Winners cast their cares on the Lord. <laughs> Winers look for burdens. Come on. Winners cast their cares on the Lord. Winers look for burdens. Winners see it through. Winers are short sighted. Winners counted all joy well in trials and testing. Winers are miserable looking for justification. Winners deny self and pride. Winers promote self and pride. Winners walk by faith. Winers walk by fear. And it ain't the fear of God. Ooh, I got a few more. Winners discern when to wait and act. Whiners act when they're the wait and wait when they're the act. Does everybody get it? You want to say it again? Winners discern when to wait and to act or move. Winers act when they're to wait and wait when they're to act. <laughs> Winners call evil evil and good good. Winers call evil good and good evil. A whiner will always wait for something to happen. A winner makes it happen. Are you listening? A whiner's waiting for something to happen. A winner makes it happen. Oh, here's the kicker. Are you ready? A whiner is always looking for divine intervention. A winner is divine intervention. Oh, glory. A whiner is always looking for divine intervention and a winner is divine intervention. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? I'm going to close it first, John chapter 4. Oh, stop justifying and start recognizing. First John chapter 4. How many of y'all want to be a winner? I'm not going to ask you how many want to be a whiner. You already know who you are. <laughs> Stop. Stop justifying and start recognizing. Where's your faith at? What you see or what his promises? In 1 John chapter 4, is everybody there? In verse 1, would you read it with me? Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Now, I want to share something with you. There are many individuals that believe that Jesus Christ came in, in the flesh. Do you understand that? But they still are justifying, aren't they? Go ahead. You can go, you can go ask every one of those Revy dudes. They'll tell you, they'll believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, but they're still going to promote abortion and same-sex marriage. You understand that? So it's our responsibility to discern where they're at. Why? Because many of them lie. Yes, sir. I've had people tell me all kinds about things of Jesus and what, and the Holy Spirit says that person's a liar. And I'm like, wow, they sound good. He says, no, they're a liar. 
I thought, whoa. Do you understand? It's so important. Why? Do you think the spirit of Antichrist tells the truth? The Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies. Right? I don't care if he's got a robe on, a collar on. I don't care what he's wearing or she's wearing. You judge by the fruit. Whatever they're promoting, they're agreeing with. Uh, verse 4. Would you read it with me? You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Ooh, because what? He who is in you is what? Greater than he is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world what? Hears them. Do you see this? Who hears them? The world. The world hears them. They agree with them. Yeah, they sound good. They make many promises. We are of God. He who knows God, what? Listen, if you're of God, you're going to hear this message and agree with it. If not, you are not of God. You mean you're going to tell me this? Or... Go ahead, justify. Go ahead, just keep justifying there, Revy. You need to repent, man. That's it. Repent and shut up. Get in position. Time's running out. You're going to stand before God soon. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who does not know God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Ooh. This is the day to stop justifying and start recognizing. Does everybody agree? Hallelujah!